I'm like, this is like being the, the you know, I, we've had great speakers. Each one, every time one would get up and speak, I'd be sitting in the back thinking, oh man, <laughs> what did they do? They put me up last. I'm like the, you know, the, you know I'm up last. I, I closed this thing down and each one got, you know, they were, each one was terrific and I'm thinking, what were they thinking, man? <laughs> You know, everybody's going to expect this, this, the, you know, this amazing thing, and I'm like, oh man, and then, uh, and then Sharon hits a home run this morning, and I'm thinking, oh man, <laughs> what are they doing? Well, here I am. And uh, by the way, I bring much love from uh, the the eastern uh, region. The, the, your northern he, uh, family. Uh, we're going to be meeting next uh, week in Syracuse, and I'm going to tell them about the wonderful things that are going on down here. Yeah. You know, it's been great. Thank you for this invitation. Thank you for your hospitality. Many of you are meeting me for the first time. You made me feel like I was ha I'm at home, and I do feel at home. Thank you. Thank you. So, here we go. No. You know, everybody wants their life to have meaning. And everyone that I know wants to make a difference. And, you know, no one wants that more for us than God himself. You could say that um, a key part of God's kingdom plan is to use us to impact the world for him. See? And that's what I think Jesus was getting at when he said that we uh, would be salt and light. See? I, th I think he was talking about influence. He was talking about making an impact on the world around us, See, each one of us. We all have influence. And we're all, everyone in this room, are influencing all the time, See, either in a good way or in a bad way. We exert influence, not just as church leaders and pastors, but we exert influence in our world as spouses, parents, grandparents, um, teachers, employers, uh, friends, neighbors. And sometimes that impact is big and dramatic. But more often, it's subtle and hard to measure, but we influence others nevertheless. And what makes this idea, this statement about salt and light by Jesus even more striking to me anyway, is that who he was addressing, who he was talking to when he said that. He was talking to mostly ordinary, everyday people. He was saying that each one of you can have a positive life-giving impact on your world. And I believe that this is what every one of you want. This is not a hard sell. But I would, I would guess that most of you don't want to do it in a way that draws undue attention to yourselves. You don't want to show off or look like a jerk. You don't want to turn people off or do anything embarrassing or weird. You want to make a difference, but you want to remain relatively normal. 
I can tell by your reaction that you're saying, yeah, you bet. Okay. Well, I got good news for you. Okay. You can. You can be n relatively normal. <laughs> Uh, you can't, and uh, you know, by being naturally supernatural. Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Now, what exactly do I mean by uh, by naturally supernatural? Okay. Well, it's basically uh, being natural, but also remarkable at the same time. It's partnering with the Holy Spirit in normal ways, being attentive to people, showing them respect, having conversations, um, being kind and helpful, you see? And it's being yourself and God still showing up in your life and using you as salt or light. See? It's being the same person that you are during times of ministry as you are during dinner time. See? And the thing about naturally supernatural is that, and I think it's very important, that it breaks that negative stereotype of what the world thinks of Christians, you know. That we're all, you know, weird and we're all hard to get along with and, you know, that thing that, that, that Hollywood makes fun of and the media makes fun of, you know, when they portray a Christian, you know. Being naturally supernatural breaks that, that stereotype, you see? And it makes us wonderfully subversive the way Jesus was, who impacted people before they even noticed it. They didn't even know they were being changed. It was happening so subtly. Think of the the Samaritan woman. She had no idea what was going on until, boom, it happened. See? You see, so when you're able to be naturally supernatural uh, and comfortable to be around, see, people let down their guard, right? right? And they open up to you. They open up to God. Okay? And they open up to new possibilities for their lives. Okay? And it allows us to partner with God and be useful for the kingdom in places where religious people are useless. Out in the marketplace of life. So being naturally supernatural opens up a way for us to have a positive, uh, life-giving impact on our, our non-religious uh, neighbor, relatives, neighbors, friends, uh, in our workplaces, uh, schools, the places where we gather to relax and to socialize in the marketplace of life. And when we conduct ourselves in a naturally supernatural way, good things seem to happen. Okay. We're able to live out our lives in uh, uh, new and refreshing, exciting ways as cooperative friends of Jesus, creatively doing good for the sake of others by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And those around us experience the presence and the power of God 
right where they are in non-threatening ways. See? That leaves them with a, a good taste in their mouth, wanting more. See? And not only that, we get to impact the most um, unlikely people. Right? Folks that are that are presently not interested in church or Christ or Christianity. So being naturally supernatural is a big deal for us here in the vineyard. We talk about it all the time. Okay? Now, we didn't make it up or invent it, right? Jesus did. Jesus did. The incarnation is the greatest example of naturally supernatural there ever was. Jesus, the, the, the God-man, was the prototypical naturally supernatural human being. Okay? Bringing the kingdom of God up close and personal by simply being human and approachable. See? and involved in the affairs of everyday life. Think about it. Weddings, funerals, dinner parties, in the workplace with the fishermen, tax collectors. So what does naturally supernatural, what does a, 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 that type of a lifestyle look like? in, you know, 2016. Well, when most of you think of being used by God to make an impact, what usually comes to mind is something um, demanding, something difficult. After all, you're doing something for God. See? Something otherworldly. Something strange. Okay? Something that's way out of your league and out of your comfort zone. Right? But that's not it. See? Actually, naturally supernatural looks like you when you're at your best. See? I'm having pad problems. <laughs> when you're at your best, think about it. Relaxed, being yourself, um, loving God, having faith, some confidence, uh, not self-conscious. But being God conscious, you're not all involved with, uh oh, if I make this mistake, will I make that mistake? I gotta watch this and watch that. You're at your best, spontaneous, creative. You see? Being naturally supernatural is about being alert to God's spirit showing up in the midst of your daily routines and using you to help the people around you. Now, for my wife and I, being naturally supernatural has been mostly wrapped in the unspectacular and ordinary. See? It's simply meant being a good neighbor. See? And that has led to being invited into our neighbors' lives, our co-workers' lives, see? The people we do business with, their lives. See? We didn't have to bust down any doors. It wasn't awkward. It just was natural, you see? And this inevitably letting us into their lives because the way I look at it, you make friends with me, really make friends with me. 
I mean, lasting friendships. In Italy, you're going to meet Jesus somehow. See? That's how I look at it. Because he lives in me. See? But, if, you know, this, this just being a good neighbor, being friendly and helpful, has inevitably opened, it opens their, their eyes and hearts to God who is present and neighborly. We don't think of God as being neighborly, but he is, you see? And he has the power to be a difference maker in their lives, and they realize that. See? I remember a, a, a time uh, where um, a, a naturally supernatural t event uh, when um, my wife and I got to pray for Doreen, who was our next door neighbor, okay? Um, and um, let me just tell you, set it up. I was in, uh, we live in, we don't just live in tall, big, tall apartment buildings in Brooklyn. We do have houses. <laughs> and we actually have a backyard, by the way. A tree does grow in Brooklyn. <laughs> One or two. Anyway, I was in the backyard. I think I was raking leaves or something. I'm busy. And you got to understand, I got to set this up. I'm a New Yorker, born and raised in New York. And I had it, it's drilled in my New York head. Mind your own business. <laughs> Just mind your own, don't stick your nose where it doesn't belong because you get in trouble. That's the way, we, you know, that's just how I grew up. Mind your own business. I'm minding my own business, sleeping there. And I notice over the fence, we have short fences there. I look over, and I see Doreen sitting on her back steps, just leaning over, just sitting there. And I just do my business. And you know when you get those nudges from the Lord? I get nudges. Some people get, like, words and pictures, and I get, like, <laughs> it, literally, that's the way it feels. <laughs> Pay attention. I look over. Doreen is not just sitting there relaxing. She's actually, she's sitting there, and she's crying. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved. I don't, you know, I don't get it. Don't, I don't. <laughs> he's, now, he's, you know, like, you know, I got to say something, don't I? And now I'm getting all nervous. And what am I going to do? Don't pay. You know, okay. So I walk over to the fence. I say, Doreen, are you okay? And she looks up, and she's just crying. And I say, what's up? And she comes over, and she just tells, she tells me that she just came back from the doctor, and she found out that she can't have children. She has uh, something wrong, you know, physically wrong. And, and they told her she'll, she'll, she won't have children. <laughs> what do I do with this now? Because I know where this is going. You know where this is going. Right? Holy Spirit. <laughs> Knucklehead. Naturally supernatural Mike. So I think, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I got it. Finally. Call my wife. <laughs> so I say, hey, you mind if I call my wife, call Sean? And we, can, can we pray for you? I said, yeah. Yeah. So I run to the side. Sean, come on out. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for Doreen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we do. We just simply stand with her, cry with her, and pray for healing. You know? No, no big explosive thing. That's all we did. That's all we could do. In a natural way, we're just being good neighbors and we're just loving her. Right? And she's no strong believer. She's not a Christian. Well, long story short, 10 years now, fast forward 10 years, she has three kids.
And she believes in God. Now, how many times you, we're put in situations where, you know, you just give them what you got. Just be yourself and give them what you got. See? So, I've lost my place. Somebody help me. No, <laughs> really. Um, over the years, being naturally supernatural has led to, to lots of the most unlikely people coming to, at least, at the very least, they, they get to know two things. One, that not all Christians are weird and hard to get along with. That Christians are really good people, and they care. And, you, you know, you can get along with them, number one. Number two, many of them come to the real realization that there's a God out there that wants to connect with them, that actually loves them. You know? What they do with that, some, sometimes they, they do different things. Some, but that's at least two things that happen. Now, take, for instance, well, for, for 10 years, uh, our church uh, met we had, one of our services was in a, in a rock and roll bar in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, called the Trash Bar, and it was well-named. <laughs> it was a dark and dingy and smelly, hard, no, hardcore rock and roll bar. And we would do, on Sunday nights, with the bar open to the customers and everything, we'd be in the back room where, had, where they have all the, the bands play. That's where we would do church. And then afterwards, after we'd do church, you know, we'd hang out. We'd hang out most of the night with the rest of the patrons, and we'd just be there. And so one night, I, you know, after the service, I'd go out to where we would <coughs> we'd watch the ball games a lot of times, you know, sit there and, and watch the ball games. And, just, and I went out, and sitting at the end of the bar was the strangest thing I had ever seen in a bar in my life. What could that be, right? <laughs> I'll tell you what that could be. It was a young Hasidic Jew sitting there, you know, with the payest white shirts and everything, sitting there. By the way, Williamsburg has one of the, the, the largest Hasidic uh, communities in the world. There are more Jews in, uh, Hasidic Jews in Williamsburg than in, in Jerusalem. Anyway, he's sitting there in the midst of all these tattoos and crazy <laughs> people, and there he is watching the Yankee game. I don't know. Obviously, that caught my attention. You know, you know, I just felt, go over and sit with him, watch the game. That's what I did. Sat down there, because he was all alone. Nobody was talking to him. Nobody, you know, there was, he was like he wasn't there. You know? I thought, this guy, and then I realized, this guy must be searching. He's left his, for a Hasidic Jew to come to this Gentile crazy place was unheard of. <laughs> It's, it's unheard of. And so there he is, Ben. Ben. We got to talk about the Yankees. Got to talk about baseball. Not very spiritual. We got to talk. Next week, after the service, Ben's out there again. Sitting at the ball, watching the ball game, Sunday night. Hey, Ben, how you doing? We're already friends. And then so are the other, a couple of the other people from the church. They get to know, I introduce them to Ben. And we get to, get to know each other a little bit. And he gets to, gets to find out what we're doing. I'm, I, I got to cut this short, but the fact is that little by little, he, as he got to know who I, what we were doing there, he said, do you mind if I, I hear the music? Can I come in and sit there and listen to the music? I say, yeah, come on in. He comes in. He sits. Uh, he would come in when the music playing, and he'd sit there and... Listen, very, and then he'd leave after the music stopped. You know? Then week after week, he'd come in, sit for the music, then he'd leave. Then little by little, he'd stay for my talk. So I'd throw in a little David and a little Abraham. <laughs> I knew we were back then, you know? 
you know, so you know that we got something in common going. You know. <laughs> Then we had something to talk about afterwards because he said, that was very interesting. I like what you said about David and blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, that's because we're really the same. In a lot of ways, we got a lot in common, Ben. And so, point, and then little by little, he's making friends with us. And he starts to get invited to the weddings that we're having. He gets to the, the parties that we throw and everything. Ben becomes more and more part of what we're doing. As a matter of fact, there was a wedding thrown on a Saturday, and you know Jews can't travel on Saturday. And he walked from the bus station to uh, two miles to where the wedding was because he couldn't get on a, you know, he, you know, uh, he couldn't take a bus just to be there with us. You know what I mean? But anyway, so little by little, and again, he becomes part of us. A miracle is happening, you see. A miracle that I think is just as spectacular as somebody getting out of a wheelchair in this situation. For us, just being naturally supernatural. And praying, little by little, we get to pray. How's your business? You know, he was in business. He would tell us about his family. Can we pray about that? And we would pray. Little by little. And to this day, so to fast forward around 10 years. Ben has left. He's not a Hasidic Jew anymore. He's still Jewish. He still considers himself a good Jew, but he's a, he's, he, he likes Jesus. And he goes to church. He attends the church with my friend in, in Manhattan now. You see, to me, that's a miracle. That's a naturally supernatural thing that happened. So whether it's the healing of this, this uh, neighbor getting physically healed, or this healing of the breaking down of, of walls of division that are so, you know, so incredibly tall and hard to get past. This is, these are the miracles that can happen when we just saw all that. So, the mo that's to say this. The most powerful, naturally, supernatural thing that we have done is offer friendship and hospitality and prayer to our neighbors, to people that come into our lives, you see? And this makes perfect theological sense to me because the Holy Spirit is not only powerful and awesome, he's friendly. The Holy Spirit, that's a deep theological uh, you know, statement there. <laughs> Holy Spirit is friendly. He's the comforter. He's the helper. You see? And so, my best advice about naturally supernatural, here it goes. Ready to take notes? If you want to have an impact, be friendly. Be friendly. You see, it opens all kinds of doors for ministry. You can do that. Yes, you can. Go like this. I can do that. I can be friendly, Mike. I'll do my best. <laughs> so how do you become naturally supernatural? Actually, you can't make yourself naturally supernatural. Only God could do that. Right? That's a work of God in our lives. But it's all about being alert and making yourself available to the Spirit. You see, I had to make myself available to sit at that bar stool with this guy that I thought this was a strange thing. We were from two different worlds. He was from Mars and I was from Earth. I had to make myself available when my neighbor is crying and I'm all awkward and, you know, like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, she's crying. I don't know. You know. I had to make myself available when the nudge is. That's all I had to do. You see? It's about responding obediently to his oft times unexpected, inconvenient, whispers and nudges and promptings that we easily dismiss all the time because we're so wrapped up 
in ourselves. Okay? It's all about letting God custom fit Custom fit you with a, a, an incarnational lifestyle that looks like Jesus if he were you. Living like Jesus and doing the things that he did. It's, it, it's being a neighbor the way Jesus would be a neighbor if he were you. It's being a grandparent the way Jesus would be a grandparent if he were you. It's being a teacher the way Jesus would be a teacher if he taught your class. It's being a contractor the way Jesus would be a contractor if he were you. That's what an incarnational lifestyle is like. It's the opposite of isolating yourself. It's, it's living connected to Jesus while connecting with your neighbors, your co-workers, your classmates, the people around you. Which means that you'll, you, 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 you're going to have to get out of your cocoon, some of you. See? You're going to have to get out of your cocoon and <gasps> socialize. <laughs> Sorry. And make friends. Can you make friends? Then you could be a wonderful conduit of the Holy Spirit in a natural way. You see? It, mean, it also means living with a purpose. You see? With an awareness that as a follower of Jesus, you've been invited to participate in his mission to loving people and making this world a better place to live in. Amen. Of course, this is the world he's going to resurrect. Amen. Okay. And one last thing. Um, to keep your naturally supernatural lifestyle fresh and ongoing, you'll have to keep giving it away. It's kind of like manna. Remember manna? You, you can only get enough for the day, right? If you try to hoard it, what would happen? It got sour and got worms, yeah, and it got wasted. But, so I find that this naturally supernatural lifestyle has to be given away, and you have to get it fresh all the time, you see? And the way you do that is you keep giving it away, and it keeps, he keeps giving you more. Keep giving away, he gives you more. You see? Keep giving away what God has given you for free. Love. Love. See? No strings attached. Being naturally supernatural isn't some self-improvement program or about private spiritual experiences, you know, that we occasionally have and they are exciting and all that, but it's not, that's not what it's about. It's about doing good for the sake of others with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay. In other words, it's a lifestyle of spirit-empowered friendship and service. Write that one down. Now, while I've been talking, something's been going on. Many of you have been strangely moved. As I've been speaking about this, yeah, something's going on inside of you. Okay. Some of you are having a, an emotional reaction to what I've been saying. Uh, uh, there's something, it feels like encouragement. You know, it, it feels like hopefulness and faith. See? Others of you, as I've been talking, 
And like, even as I'm saying this, it's kind of increasing on some of you. Um, others have been, you've been experiencing something more physical, like a presence resting on you, a warmth, or an energy, a little energy. Right now, you, as I said it, you just realize, oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I believe that's the Holy Spirit resting on you right now. I believe that that's his way of inviting you tonight into something. It's his way of, of inviting you into a new way of living for some of you. A way that will give, that will make, will make you have an impact on your world. He's inviting you he's, he's to come and enter into a naturally supernatural lifestyle with him. That's what that is. That's what's going on. And for some of you, that means it will be make, making a fresh new start with, in a way, I, I, with the Holy Spirit. See? It, 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 tonight, I think it, it might mean for some of you being filled Again, and remember, filled, actually when Paul wrote about that, he was talking about an ongoing experience. Filled, be filled and keep on being filled. And of course, you know, we get this idea in our head when we talk about getting filled up a glass and we're pouring water and the glass gets filled up. But actually that word really it has the idea of being controlled. Being filled means be controlled. Bring your life under the control of, and continually bring your life under the control of the Holy Spirit. Continually make yourself available to him. So being filled actually doesn't mean that you get more of him. In my opinion, it means that he gets more of you. And so for some of you, that's what it means. Again, getting filled, saying, okay, here I am again. I'm, in order to be filled, you've got to be empty. You can't be filled and get filled. And some of us are so filled with ourself, with our ministries, with our ego, with our whatever, that, you know, that we're going to have to let go. Tonight. There's some of you that have had gifts given to you for years. They've been laying there in your life, sitting, gathering dust. And God wants to stir them up. He really gave them to you. He didn't take them back. For some of you, it's the Timothy experience that you need. When, he, when, he, when Paul told Timothy to fan into flame that... that what's laid dormant in you. I think that's what it means for some of you. And so as you sense something happen, that's him. And I break the power of fear. The fear of something. If I give in to the Lord, if I finally say yes, I won't like what I become. I'm afraid of what I'm going to turn into. I break the power of that lie. You will be at your best as a human being. That's a lie from the devil keeping you away from trusting him. Stop it now, in Jesus' name. He's inviting you into something wonderful, often difficult, sacrificial, but wonderful.
And if you sense in some, one way or another the Holy Spirit, his presence, in some way it's registering that you're being invited, I want you to stand to your feet. And as you do, I think the pre- you just keep focusing on him. The presence of the Lord is increase on you more. more. Now I bless what you're doing here, Father. I bless what you're doing here, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Thank you for the invitation that you're giving to join in. Put out your hands. Put out your hands. Yeah. Now, for some of you, don't try to get God to do anything. Just stand there. Just stop and relax. Stop. Relax. You, you don't have to beg. He knows you're not perfect. He knows you, you've given him a rough time. He knows it, and he loves you. Just allow him to come to you. More, Lord. Now, those of you that are sitting, don't think that you're off the hook here. Look around you. I need your help. I want you now, I want everybody that's standing to at least have at least one person next to them. Okay, and gently, gently, I don't want any counsel, nothing, no, t- no talking yet, no praying yet. I just want you to stand next to them, okay? At least one. Just let's gather around these folks that are standing up, okay? We are the body of Christ. He expresses himself. He does his ministry through his people. Great. We need, we need a number of people right up front, this whole front row here. So could you please, those of you in the back that are doing, you know, just sitting there, come on up, please, need your help. More, Lord. More. Those of you that are standing, waiting, don't worry. Even if somebody doesn't lay your hands on you, the Holy Spirit is on you. You're not going to get left out. More, Lord. Okay, now, what I'd like you to do those of you who are, are praying, I want you to just gently bless them and ask the Holy Spirit to fill them. Ask the Holy Spirit to, give, to stir up the gifts. Just, I believe the Holy Spirit will give you the right prayers if you'll just listen to him right now. Where's Hannah? If, if, Hannah, if you're not getting prayer, why don't you come on up? More, Lord. Now, in the name of Jesus. We just bless you with, the, with, with a, a refreshing 